from all corners of the globe to your ears, it's the Midnight Movie Cowboys. Sometimes informative, sometimes controversial, but always unpredictable. It's the Midnight Movie Cowboys podcast with your hosts, Hunter, John, and Stu. And now, on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Midnight Movie Cowboys for this week, this episode. You're hearing my voice if you're listening, or you're seeing just my face if you're watching. And uh, you'd be right in assuming that there is no Hunter and there is no John. That's because there is no Hunter and there is no John. They are having a break this week, um, but they will be back the following one after that. I'll get into that a little bit later on, what's happening with the MMC for the month of June. Um, but yeah. Ah, shit. Nez, you're here, mate. There he is. Uh, Every- by, 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 by complete accidents. By complete accidents, <laughs> as usual. Sound aside. Ah, <laughs> uh, mate, good to what's see you. Good? No, yeah. I was thinking about the idea of just recording the fucking episode by, by semaphore, you know, flags. We were having a bit of audio issue, but we got a, we got through there. We got it all fixed up, mate. We always uh, we always get there. Anyway, um, so um, this episode is the long threatened one that I've been talking about about uh, Mary Millington, uh, the lady you see behind me. If you're watching, the very lovely lady. Although when it comes to her, pleasant, yeah. pleasant on the eye, <clears throat> pleasant on the eye. But uh, when she gets to there, what I'm pointing at, she's uh, you know drug stage, so she's not uh, doing yeah, so yeah, well. Yeah, it shows. Yeah, worse luck. Anyway, so what we're doing this week, uh, we're going to whip out our junk in a section. Where Anthony is. I, I haven't gotten on this for this episode. Um, we're going to be discussing um, the documentary, Respectable. Uh, I'll just change my background here so I can show the people. Um, all right, none. Show that. This. Good one, Stuart. Okay. No, that, that bedroom's that, that bedroom's fucking bigger than my living room. My God, it's bloody hell! <laughs> it's it's a, it's a fish ends, uh, fish eye lens. Nez, it looks a lot bigger than what it really is. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to be doing this, this this documentary, respectable, the Mary Milligan's Mary Millington story, along with talking about bits of this book. Come play with mm. me, life and films of Mary Millington, which were kindly sent to me by oh you Anthony. You were kind enough to send me these books, mate. And uh, this DVD. Well, 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 well it's, it's interesting to see this shit because I checked the other night with the cheapest copy on Amazon.co.uk of, of the book, and the cheapest copy is like £241.99. It just goes for, and that Are was you the cheapest serious? one. Serious? It, 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 yeah, it, it, you'll, get a cheaper, you'll get a cheaper copy on eBay.co.uk, but in terms of Amazon, that's the cheapest one. I mean, that, that's just miles. Um, it's much sought after. My goodness. And, 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 you, you'd, think, you'd think that the publishing company would just basically be. be so we we print and we publish the whole thing and put it like now just 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 leave it. It's just surprising. I've noticed that gonna... some things where they've just said, ah, "We're not going to repress this. We're not going to reprint this. We're not going to bother." And you think, but you're just enhancing the bootleg market. Oh, okay, it's hard the yeah, bootleg. Yeah, book. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, the publishing is published by a company called FAB Press. If FAB Press was to basically make the book available for Kindle on Amazon, I'd I'd I'd, I'd just buy it in minutes. I'd just do that fucking deal immediately. Just like yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I read the book a couple of years ago, but just just to have it on Kindle, it's just like yeah, I'd, I'd love that. But so far, just no, nothing at all. And it's actually the book is actually done by Simon Sheridan, who did the yeah. documentary as well. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the last thing I had was Simon Sheridan. He made a documentary two years ago about the seventies pop with the real thing. I forget the name. I haven't I haven't seen it, but. Yeah, I mean, the last, last, last time I heard anything of him, he was clearly right. his, his 70s retro. Yeah. he uh, did, Didn't he do the book that you sent me as well, the 70s films? The yeah, yeah. Boom. yeah, yeah. Keep, keep, keeping the British end up. That's it, yes. Which, 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 which again, on Amazon goes for s- silly prices. It's just it's, it's oh, absurd. Yeah. But, yeah, so. I've got to ask this question, Anthony, because I'm sure people are going, how come you get rid of these books to send them to me? I mean, I'm 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 not being ungrateful. I'm just curious no, why we show the value of them. Oh, I, I I live alone and I'm under no illusions. If, if I were to die in the next twenty four hours, absolutely everything in this property would just go into a fucking skip. And I've got an awful lot of Blu-rays, awful lot of VHS tapes, awful lot of DVDs, but a massive amount of books. And if I can find, and I just thought, you know, if I can find, if I can find someone to basically just like take take stuff off my hands and just just like the 
enjoy in the same way I enjoyed them. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. But it's a shitload of the books though. My 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 God's just fucking endless. Really? But, I mean, again, I mean, everything in this property. If I die tomorrow, we'll just go into a fucking scape, and the whole the whole property will be stripped. And it's just like, and that'd be a shame to be honest. And I just thought, if I can find people to just like take them on and just enjoy them, then you know that's that, that's fantastic. Oh wow! Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I mean, I. I mean, I could, I could sell them. I was just like, that's, I'm not really asked about the money, to be honest. I'm just not really asked at all. It's just like, but oh, I could, okay. if the fans will just pass them on to, that'd be fantastic. Well, they uh, oh, have yeah. a very good home, I can assure you. They're, they're, uh, oh. they're very well um, cared for and um, appreciated. Yeah. Really. I, don't, I, don't really, I, I, don't, I don't know what the kids are going to make a kid in the British end up, but then again, you know, that's... You know, <laughs> that's, that's I, actually, actually, it was quite, it was quite funny, Anthony. I was in... Um, spare room not this one but the other one or the, the one of the other rooms downstairs and i said look i've got a documentary to watch and i've got to record and um my son kept coming you know that pause and think oh jesus can't you get a spot where there's not fucking tits or you know some vagina <laughs> for, the, for those who were curious about this and we'll get into this documentary this documentary if you think to yourself yeah mary mellington she's quite attractive i wonder if i get to see some boob shots yeah gonna see oh, them oh yeah yeah kind, kind of uh, yeah yeah it's, Jeez, it's some on the agenda mellington. Very, very good looking woman. Oh, maybe I wonder if I can get one fully nude shot. Yeah, gotta get him. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, geez, I wonder if there might be one shot of her bum. Yeah, gonna see a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she Anthony, I think actually, I think it's literally rated X, this thing, isn't it? This documentary. Yeah, it gets, an, it, it, yeah, it, it, it gets, it, it gets its 18. Uh, it, it, it does it, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I, God, I I must have seen it back in 2018, 2019, the latest. And it was just like, it's like I had a fixed, fixed idea as regarded what it was, what it was going to be, what it was going to be like. And yeah, it was exactly the way it was what it was going to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She, I think she got the documentary she deserved. Um, mm. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, mate, whip out your junk. Uh, like I said, I've got none. So uh, you go ahead and. Um, sure. Uh, and just, just short number of items. First of all, uh, the Radiance Films release of Francois Truffaut's uh, The Bride Wore Black from 1968. Um, mm. Haven't seen it yet. Um, all all lovingly ripped off by Quentin Tarantino for The uh, Kill Bill, volume, volume, Volumes 1 and 2. Um, mm-hmm. What buddy else? I'm guessing it shows. Next up, uh, a double cassette release, The Artificial Eye, 1995 release of Jacques Prevet's The Bellman's Work. Um, four hours long. I'm dreading the idea of watching a creepy soul, but fucking hell, it's just like, yeah, that's that's a challenge. And finally, yeah, but you're also the, uh, you're also the guy who sat through all the Jess Franco films, so you got no right to oh, complain. Oh fuck, fuck me! Yeah. That's why that, he's why I went balls. <laughs> God almighty! I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Stuart. I mean, there were some directors I don't like for various reasons, but mm. with Franco, it was like after after year seven, it started getting fucking personal. It was just like I'm gonna fuck, I'm gonna fucking beat. God, you. I remember I'm saying to you, I said, "What are you persevering?" You said, "I've got to finish him." I've got to watch them all. Well, well, well. The, the first, the first one I watched was back in August, August two thousand seven. X three one two flight to hell. I thought to myself at the time, it's only like it's only directed like ninety five, ninety six films. It'll take a couple of years. What I didn't know was that basically he directed two hundred and thirteen. And it was only like three years later when I found out he directed two hundred and thirteen. I thought, I'm halfway up the mountain now. So what do I fucking do? And it's like, well, I might as well just go the distance and just keep on climbing. And and I did. And I'm, there's only two films left remaining I haven't seen, and those t- those two films aren't even available anywhere on bootleg. Just just nowhere. So I, I'll I'll keep that margin aside. Well, but those two films could be what in the future. But outside of those two films, yeah, yeah I, I felt like fucking killing him. I absolutely felt like fucking killing him. And um, if I ever saw Lena Ramey's ass ever again, I was just fucking straight. Just God, fuck mm-hmm. you know. Anyway, um, and uh, finally. Uh, two DVDs, um, Rumble of the Bailey, season six, ah. and season seven. It, it's the type of show that I, I should have watched in, with hindsight. I should have watched in childhood, but I didn't because when you're like 10, 11 years of age, all you're seeing is like Liam McCann, Liam McCann playing a lawyer. And it's just like, oh, it's a bit boring. So it's just like, mm-hmm. nah, I'll leave it. And it's just like, but it's, it's the type of show that you kind of catch up, you kind of catch up with later on. I mean, I mean, I mean, the novels, the novels by John Mortimer are very good. I mean, really quick, um, very dry, but a lot of fun. Um, and the, 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 the adaptations basically just catch it completely. It's very, very good. Um, but yeah, it's just like you mark it down as 
a show that frankly that you should have watched in child with highs that you just I just didn't. Um, just one of those things. It, it got away like, from me. Like yes, um, prime so. minister, yes minister, yes prime minister. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh god, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, when I was ten or eleven, I'd see like a couple of minutes of an episode of the yes prime minister, yes minister, and it's just like this isn't very really interesting. This. I said, they go, like, Dad, what? What are you laughing at, Dad? What's so funny about this? But I mean, yeah, you don't get clever. it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as I got older, I watched it after you'd sent them to me. And I thought they're clever, but they're just not my cup of tea. They're okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, I mean, at, at, at the, at the t- even at the time, the, that show was was very very highly regarded. I mean, I mean, there wasn't an M- there wasn't an MP in the cabinet minister who did he didn't get it. It was just like all they were seeing was just like rebel. I was like, oh, that happened to me once. Uh, in 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 my departments, that's what the civil servants did to me. Um, mm. So it was, so it was just one of those. It was just it's it's always been beloved, um, very very highly regarded. It's just you like, know which political uh, show I enjoyed more was the New Statesman with Rick Mail. Yeah, yeah, that that was just this. Oh, that was just such a showcase for Rick. It was just it's just oh, like yeah. it's just like Mo, Lawrence Marks and Morris Grant just wrote it specifically for him. They just thought they just thought to themselves, you know what? No matter what we put on the page. He's just he's just going to make it more outrageous. So it's just like just yeah. cut loose and just fucking fucking right for him. And it's just like and he didn't yeah. he just he, he picked up the ball and he went with it. But but again, I mean, Rick and E were never were never political. I mean, they were kind of on that scene where there were there were the, the alternative comedy scene in the late seventies, early eighties, the West End, very left wing, very right on, very anti Thatcher, very anti Tory. But they were never really in it. They were just kind of they were there, but they're just not. It was just like they, they weren't interested. But there were others, many others who were. But my my God, no, they just they stayed clear of it. And I think they were all the better for it, to be honest. The only one who was really waved his flag was Alexi Sale through that period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 he's, 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 he's local. Um, he used to go to the local grammar school. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, his his autobiography is very good. Uh, if you can just like. Get past the policies of it, but yeah, it's, it's just like um, the, the the one I always think about is Keith Allen. He was just like so he he was so far left that even even other people who are far left wing were just like wary of him. It's just like yeah. and there's, there's there's one occasion he he writes in his autobiography. Well, I joined a minor strike. He went up to he went he, he did a benefit gig in a, in a coal miners in a working men's club, next to a coal mine, and the audience were coal miners, and he went on stage as this persona but uh, this this comedy persona as 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 a as a northern working class coal miner and the audience were women all the way and then halfway through he, he he mentioned to the audience oh by the way you do know I'm, I'm I'm a gay coal miner and at which point the fucking audience went berserk they just went crazy just oh, they just really? wanted to get him off the fucking stage as quickly yeah. but he said yeah it's like it's like he made the point in the his autobiography I wanted to see how far I could go with the audience and <laughs> she wasn't kidding there, there was a documentary I watched about um, the comic strip tro- uh, troupe on the box yeah. set. Um, even yeah. they spoke to Dawn French and Jennifer Saunders, and I think they said both of them, they were, they were scared of Keith Allen. They yeah, yeah, yeah. an arm's length. They didn't know what to make of him. Yeah, he, he, was, he was his own guy. Uh, there, he, he, there's another comedian he was, he was, he was close with called Tony Allen, no relation. But t- mm. the alternative comedy scene of that period goes back to Tony Allen, because it's just like, I'm left wing. I'm pro labor. I can't stand the toys, and I'm going to basically. Oh, by the way, there are certain groups I won't make poke fun out. Whereas Keith Allen was just like, well, that, that's for Tony to say. But frankly, which way, which way I'm going is 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 something is somewhere else. And mm. he would he would he, he he would just openly not really be particularly bothered. He he be offended, and and he's still that way. I mean, he presented when Channel Four set up in November 1982. He they gave him his own slot on a Monday night. Uh, whatever you want. And even then, it was just like, if, if, if it's just, just like, take, 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 take a chosen group and just take, take the piss out of them. And that's exactly what he did. Mm. And it was all, they were always worried about. It wasn't, it, it wasn't just French and so on. It was just like, virtually all of them. Um, mm. But he would just go into places where, frankly, he um, would, would, wouldn't really be particularly bothered about. And he's still like that, by the way. Um, yeah. You very rarely ever see him on television. It's just like, it's almost like he's blackballed. I don't know if that's the case, but it certainly comes across. It's been many years since I've seen him on television at all. Uh, mm. Many years. Yeah. Unfortunately, his daughter's on TV a lot, or was it one? Yeah, time? yeah. She's, 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 she's um, well, I don't, know, I, I, don't think she's, I don't think she takes after him, but that could be wrong. <clears throat> Who knows? Like all right, mate. Let's get, uh, you've finished your stuff. So let's get sure. into this. There's quite a lot to um, unpack about Mary Millington, no pun intended. 
um no. for a very petite woman of four foot eleven and what's what yeah yeah more than 45 kilos she was a bundle of energy this girl i tell you um born in 1945 and uh died in 1979 August 1979 yeah yeah 79 age of 33 gone yeah um all right mate you've got notes um what, yeah what yeah like? i mean I, I, just 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 to set the scene I mean, if you were to go back say any week or any month in the, in the summer of 1779 one of the things you'll notice that you wouldn't see her on television i mean okay there are only three tv three national tv channels but that, that said you wouldn't see on television that particular week. What you would do is you to spend a week reading a couple, reading a couple of tab, national tabloid newspapers on a daily basis. You come across her very quickly mm-hmm. because although, frankly, she was blackballed on television, the tabloids absolutely just went with her. They just she, she was fantastic copy, um, bit, bit, bit of TNA, bit of sauce, mm-hmm. um, bit of action. And they absolutely fucking loved it. They, they just they just revered it. They knew full well that Frankie really the Panthers loved that. They loved that. Um they knew full well that Frankie really um exactly what she was all about. And they 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 they, they, they she filled many a column in shape on a on a on the weekly, if not daily basis, in terms of the tabloid press. So mm-hmm. so as far as the television industry was concerned, um officially she was a secret, but the reality is as far as the tablets were concerned, she was anything but she was just like go. It was just fantastic. Mm. It was just never she, added. Uh, she was Samantha Fox before Samantha Fox. Oh, oh God, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, by by by, by the summer of 1979, Patreon the Sun was was eight years old. Um, mm. so so the idea of the top top of this one was just like it, it had already basically been put into place. But around at the same time, little did we know, the British sex comedy boom was about to begin. And she was just right. She and a couple of other girls were just absolutely right in time for it. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Mary Milton basis that, that we know today only really begins in the East of 19, 1977 with the release of Come Play With Me. Up until mm-hmm. that, up until that, she'd done a couple of films, bit parts here and there, starting with Oscar Doctor in 1972, and then going into the Naughty Victorians in 1974 for EMI. And up until that, outside of those two films, up until that point, she basically did eight millimeter silent loops, both both here and in West Germany, which basically mm-hmm. wouldn't have been seen by the public, except for those who basically um, purchased eight millimeter loops via the post and and just know what. And th- those films were not designed for private cinemas; they were, they were just really for people who had um, addresses for people who dealt in mailing lists and who, for a certain degree of remuneration, would ship off an eight. A ten-minute hardcore eight-millimeter loop without sound for, for, through, through the post. If if indeed you got it through the post, because the chances would be high, the police would basically intercept it. But that's another story altogether. Anthony, when I was watching this, there was a question I posed. Or I thought I've got to ask you: What do you think those sorts of things would have gone for at that time? Those eight-millimeter loops, fifty quid maybe. Well, well, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I work up on the basis that whoever was selling them. Was, could just basically name the price. It's just like mm. I mean, I mean, just like you, you, you can rip, you, you can rip the puzzles off very easily. That man, because what are they going to do? Complain? It's mm. like they're buying, they're buying X-ray material, hardcore material, illegal at the time, through the post, all very brown, plain, packaged. Yeah. And if, if and if by chance they kind of ping a little bit over the odds, well, we're not going to complain. So you know, plus the fact that frankly, really. If the package is intercepted by the police, um, then don't, don't, look, don't look at us, Gov. It's just like, you, know, you, you bought it. So I, my, my guess is that a lot of people got fleeced in terms of um, getting what it is they wanted, what it, what oh, it was. So they would have sent the money, um, expecting the package, it never got sent, never got, never turned up. Yeah, never got yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's not, there's, there's no, you know, there's, there's, there was no comeback, if, if indeed that ever happened. It probably did, but that, that so it was basically nerves. eBay before eBay. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was all it was all very first. It was all very hush hush. It was all very not as good as went to a blind bass. And mm. uh, you're not really meant to be watching this, but then, that, now that you've got it through the post, now that you set up your home projector, he's he's going to stop you. It's just like you know, it's just like it was all, it was all very very clandestine, and very covert, and very very furtive. Uh, mm. it's, it's like when when you walk into a sex shop, and there will be other blokes in the sex shop, but it was always a rule that you wouldn't look anybody in the eye. 
you know it's just like it's just like i'm, 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 I'm not here i'm not yeah, here it's I know. Just like, it's like, yeah there was a there was a know, code of, here. it was like a code of honor you just you walked in you, there was no acknowledgement of the other guy with the you know yeah. just... it was like it, was, it, it would be it would be fucking silent it would be it would be an atmosphere of monastic silence there will be no sound nobody will be talking to each other nobody nope. will be looking to each other it's like none, none of us are here just absolutely none of us are here and yeah. then you take the packet, yeah. the, the magazine over to the magazine with the counter. Then you do the deed, and the guy you behind pay, the table, you the pay with your head turned as if you're being distracted by something. Yeah, else. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when, when I used to, when, when yeah. I used to do it like twenty years ago, I in my local private shop, I would wait outside the private shop because it was all I, I was always worried about the idea of strangers seeing me going going in. So I'd always just like no one around, no one around. Okay, now now I can go in. And and you and, and you win it, but it's just like the problem is that you, if you just have now that just walked out, somebody's just fucking walked past and seen me. It's just like oh, God, never mind, never mind. Um, it was also just and, like, like the fucking like and the secret biggest, army. Yeah. The biggest fear was bumping into somebody that you knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, where where, where my private shop? I don't even know if it's still open. It's it was, it's right next to a train station, uh, right in the right at the point of Liverpool the Liverpool CBD. So mm-hmm. it's like it, it, it's not like oh god, oh god. It, it, it was all part of the it was all part of it was like they're strangers right they don't know you so the chances of somebody whom you know just happening to walk on by but the odds are just like 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 five thousand to ten thousand to one but it's just, yeah. that's not the way, that's not the way you were thinking it's just like oh my god what if somebody sees me it's just like oh my god no 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 um yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. like being a, it's like being a teenager like buying a porn magazine putting it under the carpet in your bedroom. And then discovering that your mum's been here in the bedroom and she's lifted up the carpet and she's seen it, but she, so she's put the carpet back. So you kind of, you know that she knows, but she's not saying anything about it. It's just like, oh, God, mm. God, God, God. kind of leverage. It's like she's got that over you. What can you do? Yeah. Like, yeah. That's right. It reminds me very briefly as well of the uh, song House of Fun by Madness. Yeah, yeah. I, I, look, yeah, look, you know it. Yeah, yeah. But nobody uh, understands what the lyrics are to that. No, no. Nobody. It. It's not no. about going in and buying fucking balloons. It's about a young man who's old enough yeah. to go and buy contraception, male contraception. It, 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 it was in 1981. How's it for my madness for stiff for stiff records? You know, <clears throat> it's why um, was about a teenage going to the chemist and buying box box of rubbers, but yeah. of course. The media didn't cover it that way because they didn't get it. It's, nope. I mean, it by rights it should have been banned by BBC Radio One, but even BBC Radio One didn't fucking get it. It's just, it's just like, it's just like, it's just like the the ban of having a lot of everyone's expense. It's just like nobody got it. It's just like, it's like past the Dutchie by Musical Youth, same year, top ten hits. Oh, what the the the, the band would do? Many a children's Saturday morning TV show, and they would ask, they would ask the question. What's a duchy? Oh, it's like like a stew in a pot. But in fact, actually, really, it was just Jamaican slang for drugs. Yep. You know, cannabis. It's just like yep. pop, pop, pop. Of course, nobody That's got it. Like the, yeah. The BBC didn't get it. The tabloid media oh. didn't get it. The public didn't get it. It's it's, it's like um, YMCA. It's like it's, it's like YMCA by the village people. But the people who chase. But then when the penny dropped within the navy, and the public suddenly realised what what it was about and what the ban were about. It, it was over. Disco was over. It's just like, oh yeah, they've been taking the piss out of us. And after, after in the Navy, for, for the village people, that was it. They just never had another hit. It was almost no. like, how how dare you? Um, the, the thing, oh, the thing yeah. as well with like with House of Fun, it's just the lyrics are basically there in front of you. They're being, they're not being. Yeah. Oh, oh, good, yeah, yeah. They're not being buried amongst uh, innuendo. You know, Suggsy's singing. You know, a box of party hats with the coloured tips. Well, what the fuck do you think uh, this yeah. is? <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's, god! It's, it's, it's like it's like Golden Brown by the Stranglers. It's like it's about heroin, mm. and it should it should buy right. You, you, you think to yourself, oh, the B, the BBC are going to ban this on Radio One because it's like it's about heroin, but nobody ever mentioned the word heroin. It wasn't mentioned in the track. The media didn't pick it up. They didn't know what it was about. The public weren't think, thinking along the lines of what's the song about. All they were thinking of, it's a really good song. I'll go and buy it on seven and a half. Mm. Uh, so it's in the half inch vinyl. But they weren't thinking about it. That's just how the, the public and the media was. It's just like, 
oh, it's not really about that, or it doesn't occur to us that basically it's about something else, and you know, we're not going to like something else. But this is, yeah. I mean, the history, the history of rock music, rock and pop music over the last fifty years is just full of that type of thing. I mean, fucking hell, it's just end, it's almost endless. That's why I, um, that's why I really like Oasis. They took the piss out of yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, oh god, yeah, yeah. The I, mean, I, I remember, I remember the time when Walk the Wild Side by Lou Reed came out in seventy two. BBC Radio One were confused because they didn't know what the song was about, and so they had to ask its DJs, look, "Look, do you know what the song is about?" And of course, the DJs knew exactly what it was about, and what they were doing was just if you tell the management of BBC Radio One, "Oh, it's it's just about like people who just to, to have a good time at the weekend in Central Park, and you know, it's just like people who go to New York for a good time, and, you know, whatever." And of course, they've just taken the piss out of the management. The management yeah. just didn't. No, I mean by rights, really, they should have banned it, but it it it, it got through. It just got through, and, and, and it still played on radio to this day. Mm. Yeah, strange. Anyway, you were saying about "Come Play with Me," which we know from via the documentary in the book, came out in nineteen seventy seven. She died. Millington died in seventy nine. So we're talking about two yeah. year window of popularity here. Yeah. This is she, crazy. She, oh, yeah, I mean, but for that two and a half year window, she was busy. She did "Come Play with Me," then "Playbirds." Then the David Galaxy affair. Um, the last thing she did, no, sorry, the, 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 the penultimate thing she did, but it was the last to be released, was the Great Rock and Roll Swindle. Mm. And then it was um, Queen of the Blues, document, documentary Queen of the Blues, which is just like something else altogether. But for that, but for that two and a half year period, she made five films, and frankly, they were fucking huge. It was just, well, four of them were huge. The other one was just like, it would only really be seen as sort because it was just like morbid, but that's something else altogether. We'll get to that later. But she was mm-hmm. really busy, absolutely busy. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Um, now, uh, we're going to be jumping all around the timeline here with this sort of thing. Sure. With her. Sure. But the one thing I noticed throughout this documentary was, um, and this is very apparent because it's mentioned so many times, is her, the closeness to her mother. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Two things I want to raise is the fact that uh, no father figure in the house when she was... Oh, he left. He, he left. Yeah, he left. She, yeah, yeah. Ma- Mary was a litmus. She was basically raised by her mother. They were very close. The funny thing is, um, I don't know if it's in the doc. It's been a couple of years since I've seen the documentary, but there's a there's a first, there's no photograph of Mary as a child being walked by her mother. And another person who kind of resembles Sylvia Cristal. It's yes. just a stop. I mean, she. I mean, she. 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 Born and kind of resembles it's like well, no, good good genes. I mean, the father looked like, but my God, mother's in a bit of good girl by remarkable resemblance. Bloody hell! Yeah, yeah. There is a, a strong resemblance. You're correct there. <laughs> Excuse me. And the next one I write, I want to raise uh, regarding her death. Uh, people spoke about okay, she died in seventy nine. August 79, you said, Anthony, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, very strong cocaine addiction at the time. Um, uh, kleptomania, which I didn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's nothing to do with, you know, that's, that's, that's a disease of another type. Yeah. The mania is obviously compulsive stealing for those of you who don't know. Um, also, uh, pill addiction and fear of harassment or fear of constant harassment by the police. Which is what everybody seems to believe is what killed her was the harassment by the police. Sure. I have another theory because I've seen it happen before to numerous other people, and it happened to a friend of mine who also died of a heroin overdose three three years, two and a half years back, who was raised by his father and barely ever saw his mother. Sure. Never could kick heroin. And eventually got him in the end. Mary Millington, I believe, died of abandonment. Yeah. Because when her mother died, they even said in the documentary, she was never the same. She became a shell of us. No. And all the sex wouldn't fix that. All the yeah. drugs wouldn't fix that. And uh, ab- people with abandonment issues. Yeah. Betrayed because that person has died. Yeah, the person has left them and they can't. They they hold themselves guilty. She, yeah. I'm sure she felt that way when her mother contracted cancer. 
while yeah. the mother had the cancer for quite a few years sure. she felt guilty hence her uh her reasoning to go into the sex trade to earn the money to give her mother a comfortable life yeah um and then obviously she started making money and more money and more money yeah. until she was making so much money she didn't know what the hell to do with the money um, no, I mean, yeah, yeah i mean she, the reason she got into porn was because basically she wanted to basically support her mother but also but she got into porn really by accident she she, she hooked up with a, a, a glamour photographer in soho called john Lindsay, and it was just like pay money to her to be honest but again it was just like to support her mother and john Lindsay put forward the idea well have you actually thought of the idea of um going a bit further she said sure no problem and she basically referred her to another basically pornographer uh george harrison marx and george harrison marx was the gateway into in, into into both soft porn and hardcore porn from from seven from 74 onwards uh up up, up until the end it was george harrison marx truth be told who directed come play with me um that that he, he was a key player in david sullivan's porn empire Roald Vale. and from 74 from, from from 74 onwards she would basically do well, she would she would perform she would perform in West Germany, um, perform in England, and and she was she, she wasn't she wasn't silly about it. I mean, she knew for what well, this this wasn't really going to be seen. I mean, she she was then starting to gradually pop up in small roles, um, but she suddenly discovered the hot very quickly that she really liked it, and to the point where frankly, really, it wasn't for her. It was scarcely work. It was just like I'm I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy bisexual. Um, uh, I'm gradually making more money. Mum's happy. Mum will never know. Mm. Uh, although I, I suspect towards the end of her life, mum actually really kind of found out the hard way that frankly what was going on. But, but yeah. nonetheless, but yeah, I mean, it was it was like it was like she started to be surrounded by people who may not necessarily have had their own best interests at heart. Because for George, George Harrison Marks, she hooks up with Paul, Paul Mogul, David Sullivan. Mm-hmm. And he basically put, puts her in his magazines, of which fucking love so many. And she, at that point, David, she just takes off with the pup, his readership. And it's just like, he starts getting inundated with letters along the lines, can we see more of this girl? Can we see more of Mary? And at which point, at which point, Salvin is in a relationship with her. But also, basically, she, by this time, 1976, 1977, she's married to Bob Baxter. So she's basically, but it, it's okay because Bob is obsessed with her husband. Bob is obsessed by the idea of open relationships. So as far as he was concerned, he didn't have a problem with her basically having a relationship with David Salvin or anybody else. Um, mm. And he expected the, the the idea to be reciprocated by by Mary, and, and and she did. But yeah, it's just like yeah, you look at the men in life: John Lindsay, George Harrison Marks, her husband Bob, and David Salvin. They they were pretty well well. She she abandoned she she left Lindsay behind. She left the Harrison Marks behind. Um, David Sullivan was a boyfriend until early seventy eight when the, the relationship ended, and she went off on her own. But that's another story. And mm-hmm. the marriage basically ended, basically stayed stayed on the road until she committed suicide. But you you kind of wonder did they really have about her own best interests at heart? No, well, probably not. They were probably just not. Really- play that they knew she had a, a high sex drive and she was there she was ready yeah. to go yeah. the time. and it's like well i'm gonna keep this girl around because it, when i want it i can get it yeah 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 um so you know whose fault is that i mean you can't blame the guys because you're gonna do that and yeah i mean i mean, I mean, I mean for her poor choices she's I mean, got to take I mean, responsibility for her own choices yeah yeah i mean it's an interesting question could bob her husband be, be accused of being a, a suitcase pimp who knows? Me. Who, 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 who knows? Um, is he still alive? Or is he, he dead? I don't. I, I don't know. I mean, these days, he's probably been in his nineties. I mean, I've only ever seen one. For, he was almost he, unlike her. He was in the background. He, he didn't do public functions. He never turned up for premieres. He never turned up for parties. He was just like he, he was just very reclusive. I've only ever seen one photograph of him to be honest. It's just very very hard to track down anything on. Uh, he was a butcher by profession. When they were married, and when when she committed suicide, he just basically sold the property in Walton Thames and just basically just just went to, to, to Spain. Uh, but unlike her, he he just stayed in the shadows altogether. Yeah, you know, just he just didn't want any any part of it. He, just, he reaped the benefits of watching the money she was making. Oh 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 god! I mean, if you've seen the if you if you've seen the photograph in the book of a house, 
Mm-hmm. Um, very, very nice. Very nice yeah. to do. So, so, so he broke a belt. I just opened up one page and this and there was a naked picture of her. I was like, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like just, oh, another just one. Okay. random. Yeah, and I can't show them on this. I can't show them here on YouTube, worse luck. But uh, no, oh, no, buy, no, buy God, the no. book. Mortgage the house and buy the book. If you, if you, if you can afford it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, that's the uh, that's that was my summation of what her demise was. Uh, was she was hurting? Yes. Yeah. There were so many. There were so many factors involved in that demise. It's, it's just. It's just. It's almost near enough unbelievable. Um, mm. You had the drinks. You had the drink. You had the pills. You had the drugs. Well, they um, say Anthony. They said that she didn't drink. That's the strange thing. She couldn't stand yeah, the smell yeah. of boo- uh, the booze. Yeah. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't. Couldn't touch it. It just drank orange juice. So when they found her body yeah. with that much vodka in it, they people were starting to, you know, prick up their ears and go, oh, "It doesn't sound right." Yeah, when, when, yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when somebody graduates from orange juice to vodka, there's something clearly wrong. I mean, but that's, yeah. that's that's some that's some graduation. Yeah. Um. Oh, there, there, there was the there was the kleptomania. There was the there was the tax demands from the inland revenue. And the last, last but not least, she had to deal with the, well, frankly, the very, uh, the hideously corrupt Metropolitan Police, which, which, for 1977-79, it was just fucking, it was bent, it was so, it was really? so bent, it was ridiculous. Um, I mean, you know, it's just like, I mean, just, just wanted to add the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in, in early seventy eight. She said she broke away from David Selby. The relationship came to an end. She decided that what she was going to do was set up her own sex shop in Tooting on her own. She was going to take a solo run at it. And David Selby warned her not to do it. He, he made it very clear to her, look, you're going to get into trouble here. The Inland Revenue is going to be after you. The Metropolitan Police is bent. Uh, the Vice Squad, the Obscene Publication Squad at the Met is bent. The Flying Squad is bent, and they're frankly going to be on, on, down on you like a ton of bricks. Don't do it. The reason David Selden got, got away with it is because he could afford the, the, the legal protection to basically withstand harassment from the Met. She decided to go ahead and do it anyway. And within two months of the shop opening, she was raided by the Obscene Publication Squad of the Met. And she and a, and a co worker were basically charged with selling Obscene Publications. And it went to trial, uh, spring 70, 78, and she and a friend were acquitted. And at that point, it should have stopped there. But the Met being as bent as it was at the time, um, they, they just they just carried on. And it was just raided and raided and raided. And then then they started um, making make, making extortion demands. You're going to give us this. Otherwise, frankly, really, uh, it's just going to get even worse. It's bad now. So she, 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 I don't think she was naive. Because Selden did warn her not to do it, but she, because she so believed, she so believed in what she was doing, she was happy to do it, and she just did. And I think it was one factor; it was just absolutely one factor. Uh, she wouldn't listen. Mm-hmm. I mean, my God, my, my my God! I mean, you know, anybody else would have just thought, leave, leave, leave it. I mean, by the way, just one certain point. In relation to the, the in relation to just how bent, bent the Metropolitan Police was in 1978-79, um, in 1971, Robert Mark was appointed the chief commissioner of the Met, new, new officer, and his intention was to basically root out corruption across the board. One of his first acts was to implement an anti-corruption unit called A10, and A10 went to work, and it was very successful. But in the course of four years, over 500 police officers of the Metropolitan Police had either been forced into early retirement or they were dismissed. It was mm. it was dead endemic. And just to realize it even further, what Mary Millington was actually facing, the head, the, the command of the flying squad, Commander Kenneth Drury, was charged in 1978 with counter corruption, and he was sentenced to 12 years imprisonment. At the same time, the head of the Obscene Publication Squad at the Met, Bill Moody, was also charged, tried, and convicted of corruption. He was sentenced to eight years. That's what Mary Millington was up against. In 1978, the Metropolitan Police was so bent. Um, even even senior officers were just frankly on the take. It's just like I mean, it, she, she wasn't naive, but frankly, she couldn't really even visit how corrupt they were. And my God, were they yeah. fucking bent? Yeah. Um, do you think that that uh, David Sullivan may have had a minor hand 
no shop being constantly raided and sort of a hurry. No, no, oh, oh, I, I, no, no. I think, I, I, I think, I think it, if you were to talk to David Sullivan to this day, he, he, I don't think he ever got over it. I mean, when if, if, if any time you see David Sullivan talking to her, talking about her to this day, it's just like I still miss her. I mm. still absolutely miss her. I mean, in, whether it be in terms of the whole idea of a personal relationship, which he had with her, or or or, or just the fact that she was just amazing for his business. I don't think he ever got over. In, indeed, to the point where on the day of a funeral in August 79, he basically ordered all of his private sex shops across the country to close for the morning as a yes. lot of respect. They, 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 they did it. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think David Sullivan never got over, to be honest. I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk to him about it, but, but yeah, mm. these days he's, he's, um, he's a very respectable figure. He owns West Ham, uh, West Ham Football Club. Oh, does he? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. He he bought. I don't know if he's a fan, um, but he he bought the, he bought the club a couple of years ago with the Gold Brothers, who was his business partners at the time. And he he's on the in, in terms of the, the English Premier League list of English Premier League clubs, he's basically you now on the top table. But I think he always wants respectability. But the, he knew full well that the, the entertainment, the section of the entertainment business I'm involved with, kind of stops it. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's he's a very very respectable figure now, in a way. <clears throat> We see this documentary. You see, they interview a bunch of men on here. David Sullivan, now have uh, Mary Millington's lover. Another guy, Mary Millington's lover. Mary Millington's lover. But you think, Jesus, yeah, yeah. she was keeping a roster of guys at one time. Yeah. The, the 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 documentary makes. I think it's an urban myth, and I think I, I just think you know, but there's there's points in the documentary where Simon Sheridan basically insinuates that Mary Millington had a one night stand with Howard Wilson. Just yes. after, just after, and and and, and I, I don't think I don't think there's anything in it, but Pino's. I think I think I think it's an urban myth. But if you can say it. the reason that the, the reason I don't think that stands up is because he alleges that she had a one night stand at Harold Wilson at the Scottish Labour Party conference in uh, I think it was basically spring spring seventy six, and to me it doesn't make any sense because by spring seventy six. Uh, Howard Wilson had just basically resigned as prime minister on on, on ill health. Basically, he was starting to show manifestations of Alzheimer's. Okay. Um, it could it, it could it could have happened, but I did, after stepping down as as PM, I don't think there would have been any reason for Howard Wilson to be anywhere in the Scottish Labour Party conference at all. Um, just just no reason at all. But but again, I can't I can't rely on, but it, it seems unlikely. Personally, to be honest. But it's, but it sounds good. It sounds good for the documentary. Yeah. yeah oh 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 fuck. I, 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 how old Wilson and Mary Millen to Mike? Like, how did the old boy do it? You, That's you, right. uh, you get to get that well, second win to tell you with around her. He could have been suffering from Alzheimer's to that degree. No, no, right. Why are they? Good on your hands. No wonder you yeah. smoke your pipe. Yeah. All right. Um, what's some other notes we can bring up about this? Um, yeah. Not much. It's such a short period of time we're talking about in terms of popularity and notoriety. I guess is her name sort of still known to this day. In um, England? yeah, to 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 an extent, but yeah, it's like it's like 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 time passes and names and faces fades. So it's just like for people for, for anyone anyone who's a, mill, a millennial, probably probably not. In fact, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's the case. But people of a certain vintage. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, if 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 you're nine or ten years of age in 1979, 1980, mm. even if you haven't seen their films, mm-hmm. then you know who she is just by name. It's just like, oh yeah, yeah, she, she, she yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of, I mean, I, they got a release, didn't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, by 1977, at the point at which "Come Play with Me" was released, the the, the, the British sex boom was already on the way. You had. You had the, the Confessions series. You had the Adventures, the Adventures of 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 a series. You had um, ups and downs of Handyman. You had um, it was just the, the British the British sex boom was just in full full play, and they were just they were just like there's a bandwagon to be jumped on. Let's jump and and David Selwyn just thought to himself, yeah yeah let's 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 jump. We need a film. It can't play with me was just born out of the eye of David Sullivan looking at the, co- the competition uh, and just think to himself, I need a film. I need a film to basically jump on the bandwagon. And it was can't play with me. And just to want to say the point, mm. in 1977, 
the following films were released at the UK box office. Come play with me, The Stud, uh, Confessions from a Holiday Camp, uh, Adventures of a Plumber's Mate, Standard Virgin Soldiers, fucking good film, um, Rosie Dixon, Night Nurse, and, and, and last but not least, and maybe your favourite, but, but maybe not, the film version of Are You Being Served, which is shocking. It's just shocking. It's, it's not good, yeah. And, and, and they were just in 1977 alone. And just, again, it was so popular when it came out, East of 77, it was so popular. It was the second biggest grossing film at the British box office that year behind The Spy Who Loved Me. It just oh, took wow. off. I mean, I mean, I mean, e- e- even for that band, I mean, what would happen is that the sex com- British sex comedies would always basically make their money in the provinces, not London, because the, because what would happen is that the London critics would sl- slaughter them and they get sent out of the provinces in opening week and they do really well in the provinces. Christopher Wood in his autobiography makes the point that the provinces just it was, it was as if people living in the provinces around the country they couldn't have cared less what the critics in London thought about the films. They just loved them. They they were getting it. They 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 wanted to be entertained. They found it very funny. Um, they were kind of entertained by a bit of TNA. Um, it wasn't it wasn't family fun, but it had the kind of family feel, or it was kind of jarring. Mm. And he makes the point that frankly, if it wasn't for the promises, those films just wouldn't have taken off at all. They would the bandwagon just wouldn't have lasted. Um, but but it, but it did. It just it just carried on. There was a bandwagon to be to be jumped on. Everyone was having to jump on it. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, 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 go, go to Robin Ask, Robin Asquith's Twitter account and just kind of what, what was it like jumping on that bandwagon in the seventies? And not just like it's fucking brilliant. It's just like, and it's, how could you say anything but that? You know, how could you? Yeah, say yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's, he's oh, by the way, his, his autobiography is very good. Um, I remember mean, yeah, saying, he, yeah, yeah. I've been wanting to read that. I want to read it. My, my guess is that it probably goes for silly money in the same way on, on Amazon yeah. and eBay as the, as the same as Jared, but still. But well, yeah, I, just, I mean. I've just looked at this yeah. uh, Murray Millington box set, the uh, Blu ray movie collection, uh, 118 bucks. Yeah, the Arrow release. Oh, <laughs> bloody hell. I bought some of the. I, and I bought my copy, it was like 40 quid from Amazon, but I bought like two months in advance. Um, oh, boy. Right, because. So, Took them out the box, threw the box away, stuck them on the shelves, and that 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 was it. It's just like, um, I'm, I'm never going to sell these. I'm never going to no. sell these. Oh no, no, like, no, 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 don't do that. I mean, I mean, the first the first time I saw Mary Mills in anything, I suppose was eleven. A friend mm-hmm. had a home video copy. They just put one well, of a few people in the area who actually had video video recorder. They just somehow came got hold of a copy of the David Galaxy affair. Oh, oh, well, that, that's, that's Mary Millington. Oh, oh, wow, well, this, is, this is nice. Went around to his house. I was like, it, it, it was kind of like, at, at the time, it wasn't very good, but it was just like, when you're 10, 11 years of age, it's just like, this is just amazing. <laughs> this is just like, yeah, this is like, oh, oh, yeah, this is stuff you can't get at home. It's just like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's yeah. like the line, it's like the line in Small Town Boy by Boston, the, the love that you find will never be found at home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would get this at home. Um, yeah, why? Are we? Yeah. And it's just that. I, I, but, but, but I remember the time it was, it was jarring because, oh, there's Diana Dawes. Oh, oh, there's 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 Benny Winters, family family, family favorites. Oh, there's Alan Wake. Who's oh, he's married to Diana Dawes. It's like all these all these television comedy actors you you, you see on a regular basis, like passing through the film. It's just like. They're not meant to be in this. They are, <laughs> they are spoken about in the last 25 minutes, um, Dinah Dawes and Alan Lake, and they don't come across as very likable. They say she's okay. No. He's weird. Yeah. He was weird. Yeah, he, 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 was a he, he was a heavy boozer. Mm. Uh, he was a hardcore drinker. Um, he had the reputation of um, spousal abuse. He basically knocked her around, to be perfectly honest. Mm. Um, and he did that. He, that's a, a couple of women. Um, he was just basically a functioning alcoholic. Um, he always had ties to the, 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 the London and the world, oh. um, which, which is an image that he kind of encouraged. And it it, 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 it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me that basically when she died of cancer, it, within a year, he basically just blown his brains out. It just, it just didn't surprise me at all. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I, I, I know what well, I, I, I know that. He was actually he was actually a consultant on 
He was a consultant on the film Sweeney 2 because this, this, remember the scene in Sweeney 2 where they, they raid the bank and, they sh and one, of, one of them basically shoots, shoots at the ceiling to basically drop the plasma onto the couch just to terrify people. That was Lake's idea. He basically, he basically told the director, Tom Clegg, look, it wouldn't have like, happen like that. What would happen is that they go into the bank, shoot the ceiling just to terrify the people behind the counter, just drop the pl plaster on the counter, just, just to just make sure that, frankly, you didn't get any anybody who didn't want to non-cooperate. But yeah, right. he, he, had, he, had a couple of, he had a couple of ties to him, a couple of dodgy pies. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that came. I think that came across. He's very good. He's very. The last I saw him in Alan Lake in anything was was the black stuff where he played a, a, a gypsy comrade. He played that one. He played that one very well as well. But yeah, he's just, just a nasty piece of work. Apparently, mm. by all by all, 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 all for, yeah, all reviews. I'm just looking here. It looks like Diana Daw Diana Dawes was only fifty two when she died, and she looked yeah, yeah, she, what, way well, beyond way beyond fifty two. Yeah, so, she, she she died. At, she was a sim. She was a, just to what, just to what happened. She, how to what extent she was a canny old bird. She was diagnosed with cancer two years before she died, and what she decided to do was she decided to write a book on how to lose weight. Now she was dying of cancer, right? so the the weight's coming off her, and it's really visible in the parents. But, but she wrote a book shortly after the diagnosis, how to lose weight. Next thing you know, she's got a bestseller in her hands. Is this like? Diana Dawes has lost weight, right? So there's something in the book, right? And the next thing you know, she's appeared on breakfast television on a weekly basis, being being weighed on 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 on, on, on scales mm -hmm. to record to record the loss. And it's just like, oh yeah, just follow my advice, right? And you're you're gonna lose weight the same way. It's just like you can't you can't you you you, fuck, you fucking you fucking hustler. You were brilliant. It's just like she's making yeah. money from it's dying of cancer. She's still making money for fooling the public. I thought, Jeez. my God, such a chutzpah. Yeah. My God. Yeah. I don't think she ever got a, I don't think she ever got a Jew as an actress, but but that's just that's just me. I mean, my she was pretty good. Um pretty good yeah. indeed. I, last time I saw her and she she popped up an episode of the Sweeney. Um where she played as played a battle axe, which was very good in that as well. She was she was a very good actress, but she, I don't think she ever got a gym. It was just like Oh, she's just like like a like a like a glamour star who ended up basically just like putting on weight. Mm. Um, but yeah, she could. She's very good actress, though, altogether. Good looker in it. Her early days. Oh, oh, oh God, yeah. I mean, mm. oh God, she, she she did a very she did a very good film about the Ruth Elsifer called Heel to the Night, directed by J. Lou Thompson. I don't know if it's on YouTube, but it's worth tracking down because that's a that's a that's a very good film, very good performance altogether. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, what's some other notes you got about uh, Mary Millington? Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's lots and sods. Um, I, 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 well, I will I, say I, this I, I, just before what? we start. Yes, say, this documentary is an hour and fifty minutes, so one hundred and ten minutes, sure. and it is jam packed with information. There is no overlap of information in here. Yeah, just, yeah, it flies absolutely it flies. It flies by really fast. So yeah, I just I wanted to bring that up. for those of you out there who are going, oh, I don't know if I want to delve into this document. Delve into it. Even, I knew nothing about her until um, I mean Anthony brought it up. So I hear Stuart said you these. Oh, I'll go give him a watch. And I thought I said I remember telling you I said that's oh, the girl from the Great Rock and Roll Swing. Do I know her? Yeah. But I don't know yeah. Actually, nothing else well, about her. Well, the, 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 this I, I watched Great Rock and Roll Swing last last year for the first time, and it, and it, it I don't know about you, but. For me, it just kind of causes kind of having really kind of ghostly pallor because the the great rock and roll swindle came out here in May 19, 1980, By which time, Sid Vicious is dead, yep. Nancy Spongeon's dead, and Mary Milton's very dead. And it just it, 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 and it just it's just like oh god. I mean, nobody nobody really saw it that kind of for sure, but it just kind of has that really kind of ghostly pallor. Remember remember the closing credits sequence, and you get to the end of the closing credits sequence, and he had that 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 image. Uh, of um, the tabloid headline, Sid Vicious is dead. It's one of the tabloid headlines, Sid Vicious is dead. And that just, it just kind of makes it even worse. It's just, it's just like, I mean, I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, Julian Temple, on the week of the film's release, was asked the question, does Sid dying really actually basically hurt or benefit the film? And he said, this, well, it, it can only really benefit. And he wasn't, he wasn't like, he was just, no point to be dishonest about it. He was just like, it, it doesn't hurt the film. Because mm. if if Sid was still on the event, if Sid was still alive, he'd be in Rikers Island awaiting trial. 
So no even point. if he'd have lived, it wouldn't really have hurt the documentary at all. But yeah, and, and oh, oh, by the way, just to answer the point, um, Mary Miller didn't like punk music at all. She just didn't like punk rock. She was she was into disco, specifically the Bee Gees, and just wasn't she just wasn't that type of girl. Um, but but yeah, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a scene that the scene, you may remember the scene in the film with um, Steve Jones. And the sit the, the sitting together watching the film, and how irony handle comes with the, the, the torch. And, and I thought to myself, you cheeky cat, because irony handle was in Come Play with Me. Yes. And when Come Play with Me when Come Play with Me came out in 1977, she went running off to the tabloids complaining about the fact that she was duped into appearing in a porn film. I I didn't know it was a porn film. I I, yes. I saw nobody with their clothes off. I didn't know it was going to be like this. Well, the reality is, she fucking well didn't know what it was about. She didn't know what she was going to get, get into. Um, she read the script. She saw the girls prancing around in underwear on a regular basis uh, for a couple of weeks. And next thing you know, two years later, she, she's, in, she's in another film with Mary Milton. And it's just like, huh? this time they've got, they've got a scene for real. I just thought, you cheeky cow. Um, okay. But she did well out of it. I mean, in the, in the, in the course of one year, because of the, I suspect it might have been the Come play with me. Um, she landed her own sickle on, on an LWT, which was a piece of shit, but that's another issue altogether. That's, I mean, a lot a lot of the old actors who basically passed through many an English sex comedy did very well out of them. But in, in the case of um, Come Play With Me, uh, she and Alfie, Alfie Bass um, did, 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 did very well, but they, but they did complain. I, I had no idea what I was getting into. It was just, that, they, 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 exactly, they said it was a like, exactly like Caligula. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mal- I mean, if you've, I mean, if you've heard the old Malcolm McDowell's audio commentary, he just basically said, but there were just so many people who just like, oh, we didn't know what it was like. It's just like, well, you see those guys over there who start naked, standing behind the set. What do you think they're doing there? Exactly. See, yeah. see, those, see those models over there who are topless, standing next to Helen Mirren. Well, what do you think they're doing there? And they say, see, 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 see Tinto Tint- Tint- Brass over there, standing next to Bob Duccioni. What do you think they do for a living? And the sister said, "It's just like it just it's got bells on. It's just like, it just it just it just doesn't ring true. It just didn't ring true." The funny thing was, though, so John Gilgood said, "I know exactly what I was doing here, and I had a lot of fun with it." <laughs> well, 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 John God bless him was was, was actively gay, and like, there's oh yeah, as a, as a working quality, and it's just he like, did. He oh, said <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah, so here, he oh, so, I mean, the the only, the only the only people involved, nothing who didn't have a good time. As far as I'm aware, um, but Tinted Brass, who basically had the film taken away from him, and and the actor John Steiner, who just didn't regard the whole thing as really anything that was worth talking about. It's just like, I mean, there's, there's an interview with John Steiner on YouTube, and he's talking about his body of work. And some and the, 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 the question that mentions Kelly Glynn said, I just have nothing to say about it. I mean, I turned up, I did, it was awful. I did the job to the best of my ability, and when it was over, I just moved on to the next day, but I had just had no fond recollection about it whatsoever it's terrible um, it's a terrible film terrible. yeah I and mean, i i remember i remember back in 1983 bob Guccione, um had announced a film a film a, another film about a historical subject he, he wanted he had announced plans for a film version of catherine the great's life and at which but I, I remember thinking well, if it's going to be like Caligula, it's going to be just like a, just like a, just like a festival of custard pies and acid. Uh, thankfully, it was never made, so therefore, for him, probably just as well. Uh, Bob yeah. didn't learn. Well, Bob just didn't want to learn his lesson, but he ended up learning it anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the um, only thing I can say, like, sorry, just, just to say, the only, the only thing I can say about Bob Guccione, apart from Penthouse, is his science magazine Omni, which he set up in the seventies, is really good. I put the whole thing on on, on USB, and it's just like. Anything on board is just like it might be something anomaly from seven years. It's just like yeah, it's just a couple of hours reading that. Uh, but, but but that said, it's just like he he had a, he had ideas about the station that just kind of horribly backfired. But if I had a choice between play, if I had a choice between Playboy and Pencils, I'd probably choose Pencils just for the simple reason that the women look better. I I I find that could be wrong. The women just look like they did they did look like. Well, they did look unreal. Let's put it that way. They look, they look um, every day, matter of fact, but they look fantastic. Mm. Not that I would have said no to any of them from either publication. <laughs> I mean, just, just, you just remind me when Camp Play Will Be Opened, Easter 77, it, 
it played in the it played in a cinema called the, the, the Moulin in Soho. Where this this the Moulin had three screens. Um it played it, it opened on this screen one. It played there every day as sort of a religious bank holiday for over three years. And it set a record for the Guinness Book of Records for having the longest theatrical cinema theatrical engagement in Britain every day for three years. It was just like yeah. it was just the, the joke the joke goes that when the it was bull, the Mullen was bulldozed a couple of years ago. But the joke was at the time that when the Mullen was bulldozed, this film was still being shown. <clears throat> just, people were just every every day. They were just ter- now. Obviously, frankly, it goes for three years. It must have been like people going because we're just pursuing repeat viewings. But, yep. you, but you really think to yourself, like, oh, fucking many of them had already seen the film and it was just coming, coming back. It was just like it was just like it, it, it was it, it was her. It was just absolutely her. And I'm willing to bet that when she died, um, it just got even worse. But it's just like it was almost like I'm just telling her just to pay tribute to her. You know, it's just like it's just her. It's just. Uh, it's, it's all about her. And it says in the documentary at the end. At the end, it says that they film ran until March nineteen eighty one, theatrically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it 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 doesn't surprise me to compare with yours. The thing that one of the things I'm baffled by, in terms of the film, is that the film is the film is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It's it's just like, oh oh, here's two two pervy counterfeiters on the run. Now they're on a, now they're on a, a, a health farm. Um, now Henry McGee's after them. And it's just like, oh, now they're taking the clothes off. And halfway, halfway through the song, there's a song and dance routine. Yes. And you think, so, what, what, what the fuck is that doing in this? Yeah. It's, it's just like, so glad to be here. So glad to be here. And it's just like, I, I can't, I can't believe it. It's, just like, it's like, remember when you watch. Watch Cassidy and the Sound Dance Kid for the first time. And halfway through the film, you get that song and dance routine. And you think to yourself, this is a fucking western. What's the it's like what is this doing? It just it stops the film and it's trash. It's like a and, it's like a Bollywood film where basically there's Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's like, like, it's, the song and dance. Yeah, it it stops the film. They're pissing around in slow motion on the bike. And and when and when it's when it stops and starts up again. It's just not the same because the fucking traction and the flow of the film has just been interrupted. It's like it's like an electric current. It's like if if you interrupt the, if if you interrupt the flow of the current, something will stop. You know, it's just like, and it just it just isn't the same. It just it seems like we're having difficulty starting the car again. It's cut out. I mean, okay, we can. It's working again, but it's just not the same. It's like I, I've never understood why that song and dance routine isn't is in, well in both films. Actually, to be perfectly honest, I mean, it's just like. David Sullivan couldn't believe it. I mean, he saw the film for the first time and he just thought, this, this is a piece of shit. <laughs> but it's what we paid for. It's my fault because I, I took my eye off the ball and they were clearly making a, a different film. Okay, well, we're kind of stuck with it now. So so there it is. But he was he was just like, I, I, I can't wait. It's rubbish. It's just like, oh, oh, by the way, let's, let's look again. They did shoot both a hardcore version and a softcore version to come play with me. Mm. Um... The, 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 the hardcore version was just strictly for foreign, foreign markets. As far the, the book makes the point in the in the footnotes, there's only one surviving ho- copy of the hardcore print. It's it's somewhere stored in the house in the East Coast, but apparently from what we could the Simon Sheridan, it's in a pretty pretty decrepit condition. It's you know, it may be beyond the mastering. Who, who knows? But yeah, I mean David Selwell wasn't silly. He 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 knew for well that if he could basically. Put together two versions, ship one out for, for foreign markets, keep mm-hmm. keep the family fund version for the domestic. Um, they'd have a shot at something. Um, but I'd, I'd be fascinated to see what the hardcore version looks like. Although, oh, on the event, maybe I can guess about now. But, but yeah, it's just like Sullivan got the film that he wanted, but but on the other hand, he didn't because he got something worse, but he just got something that was more, more financially successful than what he actually envisaged. But it was, but yeah. It, and what was it a vehicle for Mary, Mary? Probably not. Again, for the simple reason, the Mary Miller that we talked about today only really begins with "Come Play with Me." Not, not before. Um, it's it's like it's like it's like John Wayne before before Stagecoach. He's not John Wayne. And John makes the point before Stagecoach, he wasn't the John Wayne that we know today. But after Stagecoach, he's fully formed. He he then becomes the John Wayne that we know today altogether. Well, Clint Eastwood with Dirty Harry. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. with oh, the yeah. trilogy, the, 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 the Dollars trilogy, but after Dirty Harry, that was cemented. That was Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's also just like, it, it just, it, it, every, every, every success he's actually had basically goes back to that, that, that point. I mean, I mean, even for something like a piece of shit like Joe Kidd, mm. he was stands it, you know, because, because after Joe Kidd is high plane drifter, so he gets he, he gets over that one. But it, I think he learns his lesson, uh, which is to say, um, not to basically step outside the wheelhouse all that much, uh, because I think that was a departure from it, just didn't work at all. I mean, I remember watching Joe Kidd for the first time and seeing seeing the the, the end where the train basically smashes into the bar and something for no reason. It's just like, what's going on? What's, what's just like, I don't get. I don't get this. I just like, yeah. don't get it. <laughs> you say about um, we spoke about earlier the the uh, sex film boom of the British cinema in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Australia had the same with uh, John Lamond. If you're familiar with him, the, yeah. the name vaguely familiar. Yeah, he Maybe did uh, stuff like uh, Felicity was one. Senna's oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, not quite Hollywood. Yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming back to now, yeah. Um, also, he did things like Pacific Banana, which I, I like. It's set. It's basically the, the the tail end of the sex thing from 1980 with Graham Blundell, oh, Melvin yeah. Um, You know, set on the, the hijinks and the sex capades on a, a private air, like a you know a small airline carrier. It was it was a fun film, but yeah, yeah, we had the same sort of boom here. Obviously, it all started with Elvin Purple in 1974. Well, the one that springs to mind to for me is 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 Phantasm and Phantasm Comes Again. That's my uh, the, the first the first one was directed by Richard Franklin, who took his name off the credits. Well, yes. yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, four years later he'd be directing Psycho T, so you, you can kind of see why. And the second one was directed by Colin Nicholson, who just come off the long weekend. Um, I mean, the, the two, two 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 very good directors, but they were clearly slumming it, and they didn't want the full. I mean, Bruce Bellis makes the point when he made the Barry Barry McKenzie films, they almost wrecked his career at the beginning. Because the first one came out, the critics hated it, but the film was huge. And he yep. said to himself, I survived it, right? And then and then the sequel came around and I did it again. And it was even worse. And at this point of all, he, he just thought to himself, I've got to stop this. I absolutely was I, I'm I'm I, my, my career is now so dam- so damaged. I've I've got to re- I've got to repair it, I've got to restore it. But they almost killed his career. As huge as they were, and, and they, they were huge. Um it was almost like no one's admitting to watching them. Somebody is, and and the grosses are huge. So it's just it's just like nobody's talking about it, but everyone's seen them. By the way, uh, rest in peace, uh, Barry Humphreys. Sorely missed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I I I I, I couldn't believe it when he passed away. Um, just just really immediately, basically, and paid tributes. And I just thought, you hypocritical bastard, you fucking cancelled him. Yeah, you had the. He was cancelled by seven. He was cancelled by the seven network. He was cancelled by the nine network. He was sure as shit cancelled by the ABC. And to, and to make it even worse, he was cancelled by the University of Melbourne. Yeah. And and and, that, and now he's dead. You pretended that you really actually, frankly, really very, didn't the ball along. The very city that he grew up in and, and loved. Yeah. And they fucking cancelled yeah. it. Now, then the bastards went back and said, well, I want to offer a state funeral. And now the family said, nope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, he, he, all they're backtracking saying, oh, well, we didn't say no to the... Uh, you know, to the Victorian government, to the state funeral. Yes, they did. And I even said, I, mean, I was telling somebody, I think I was telling my wife, I said, you know what? After what they did to, to Barry Humphreys, that family should, the family should say, uh, if we're offered by a state funeral by the Victorian government, no, we don't want it. I, well, I bet Daniel, when it, came, when it came to leading the charge against Barry Humphreys to cancel him, I bet Dan LeBan was leading the fucking way. Oh, he I, I, I wouldn't have bet. I wouldn't have bet. Fucking yeah. asshole. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, I think when that happened, when he was cancelled, I, I think I, he never talked about it, but I think it was privately. I think privately he would have been hurt. Broke privately, his heart. But, but, yeah, guarantee. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, L, LWT. He worked with LWT over here for like thirty years. They just revered him. It was just like oh, yeah. creatively do, it, creatively do what you want, and he did, and he just absolutely picked the fucking ball and he ran with it all the way. And and yep. figures were huge. He was loved by the public. Um. And as far as LWT was concerned, he could just do no wrong. And they, they, they everybody, everybody was in on the gag. Uh, everybody got it, and everybody was prepared to line up to be absolutely ritually humiliated. And he, 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 he did it. God bless him. Yeah. Um, the, the last, the last thing I heard about, the last time I heard about Humphreys, 
Um, he was presenting a late night show on Beams Radio 2 about his favorite music. Lots, lots of Percy Granger. That was besides, that was like two years ago. But that was just the last time, I, last week I've ever heard of him, uh, to be honest. Uh, he went very quiet filmmaker. towards the end. He was very ill as well. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's just like, yeah, oh God, you, just, you just reminded me. Celeste Patterson, pays, Celeste Patterson saves the world. You just reminded me. Directed by the other George Miller. Uh, yeah. The man, the, man from, the man from Snow, the man from Snow, not, not the not, other one. Not the Mad Max George Miller, the other George Miller. Yeah. No, yeah, not Doctor George. 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 Yeah. No, no, oh God, God. You, you did also just remind us. You just wrote three thousand, three thousand years of dreaming. I, I saw it on its opening day, and I just thought, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't believe George Miller did something this bad. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like it's just like I can't, I can't, I can't believe it. It's just I don't know if you've yeah. seen this, but it's just like it's no. just no, no, no. It's just, it's just like. Yeah. No, no. Me- there hasn't been a great deal that George Miller's done. I've really enjoyed it, past, apart from the first two Mad Maxes. Sorry, I don't like the third one. Yeah. No, do, do you think it's? Did you? No, I don't care. Do you, think it's, I don't like it. do you think it's possible that when Kennedy died in a helicopter accident, he lost the producer who kept him in check? Yes. Because I don't think he was. Yes. I don't yes. think he was ever the same. I don't think the films he made afterwards are ever the same. Are as good as the ones he made beforehand. There is it's almost always- like. He, there is always a partnership. When there is a partnership, there and, the, and the other person either leaves that partnership or tragically pass away, the other per- the surviving party is lost. They yeah, yeah. and they don't have. They may have other people who have got their intentions, good intentions for them, but they don't have that level of guidance that that particular person, like Byron sure. Kennedy, had with George Miller. Because Miller was the Kennedy was the producer, and he was saying, "We've got to do this, and we've got to do this," and he gave Miller creative yeah. freedom. But he's also reining him in, saying, "Okay, we've got to pull this back a bit. We've got to stop it." And when somebody is let off the leash, if you will, you will always almost find they are never ever the same as they were when they were reined in. Because people need that. Everybody needs it. Everyone needs to be yeah. reined in. Yeah. You know? Not just so, like, just so, way, just, but just someone needs to pull back. Yeah, exactly. Someone yeah. to say, I think you've gone too far. I think you're doing this. And saying it not to be, I'm not saying out of jealousy or spite, but to honestly say to them, because other people won't, you've got to just, just pull it back a bit. Just, just yeah. you know, you're getting too far ahead of yourself. Just pull it back a bit. Stop, think, look around and say, okay, Am I the decision I'm making here? Is it really going to benefit the film? Is it really going to benefit me or, me or whatever it is it pertains to? Sure. And that that comes down to life as well. Um, sure. Um, for instance, when someone puts out a post on social media, I barely post on social media these days anymore. I think it's just a scra- It's a it's a cesspool. I don't like yeah. it. And when when you see some people. And they put out these massive, long-winded posts that look like, you know, fucking uh, the brothers Karamazov or some book like that. Go, you, yeah, know, yeah. you think, did you really need to spend 60 minutes writing all this out? Where people yeah. are only going to read half of this and go, okay, I'm out of here. What are you trying? What are you trying to achieve? Likes, sympathy virtual arms around you i i don't know what your point is or what are you trying to do yeah i i I, I, the thing is sorry anthony just very quickly when people facilitate that behavior by going oh you poor thing you're feeding the monster yeah you're feeding the the ego trip they got the rush they want the likes the the you know the comments saying, "Oh, how hard done by they are, and how." Do you, do you understand what I'm what I'm telling you? Just... Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I just I I, I, I don't I, see I, the points. I I I walked off the I walked off Twitter Easter last year, and I don't miss it. It, it, it had absolutely nothing to do with the the police arriving at my door in respect of a complaint from a certain MP. Mm-hmm. Nothing to do with that at all. Uh, I was just I just I was off off. 12 years, I was just fucking done. I was done. It was, it was just fucking done. I can't, I, I must have had anywhere between two to 300 accounts 
shutdown of the course of 12 years. <laughs> no, literally, because what would, what would happen to you is that I was having a kind of shutdown. I thought, okay, now we're going to go over to the local Asda, buy a, a SIM card for a penny. Now we're going to come back. Now we're going to put the SIM card in the back of the device, set up a new account, set up a, a dummy email account for the verification code to go to, and then we'd have sent the verification code, send the verification code back. And then you get on you, you get on the Twitter and then you you, you pick up five you, you follow five people and then you pick up a twelve hour suspension for no fucking reason. Yep. Just for four, yep. five people. And then it's then every, from that point, everybody else basically is sued. And and I was I was like a fucking hamster on the treadmill. Around and round you go. Just with yep. accounts shut down, off you go. And it's just like, it just, it, I just thought I can't, after 12 All years. That time, there's waste. It, 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 yeah, what it was 12 years too many. It, it was literally 12 years too many. It got to the point where, frankly, for what was all that about? Because I don't think I achieved anything. I don't think anybody listened to the words that I that's said. Exactly, I just, that's exactly it. I, you know, people put out these things and they put out these long winded posts and you think, and it's more so particular political factions left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. You're, okay, you're 22 years old. You're constantly on social media. You're screaming about one political cause after another. You're not changing nothing. You are being nothing, nothing, used. Yeah, yeah nothing, get, nothing being changed. Being used. You're nothing. Nothing changes. Nothing gets affected. Nothing gets done. And it's just... And this, and this is before, and this is before the MP in question. I'm not going to mention the name. Um, reported, uh, she report. I, I sent a meme over to her Twitter account. I was, I was no more a meme than anyone. I was sent to anybody else. She got in touch with the Met. They got in touch with Merseyside Police. They mm-hmm. sent two detectives to this living room um, to complain about the fact that, frankly, I sent a racist um, tweet to a certain MP. By the way, they wouldn't mention the MP's name, but I knew who it was, right? And they also wouldn't show me the tweet, so I didn't know what the misdemeanor was. And right? you, should, you should have said, if you can't show me nothing, get out of here. You've got yeah, no, no, you I, won't give the yeah, name oh, of the yeah, opponent, yeah, yeah, and you yeah, won't show yeah. the offending uh, yeah. piece of uh, yeah. material. With, with, high, with, with hindsight, she absolutely, that, that's not how I played at the time. It was, just, it was just something else. And they had me on a hook for two months, right? And after two months, they simply said, "Oh, um, we're going to send you off. From, we, we, we'll give you a choice. We're going to send. We're going to refer this to trial, or we're going to send you off to an education class." Their, their words, right? And at the time, I thought that's a bluff, but I couldn't take. I just couldn't take the fucking risk. So I thought, okay, what is the supposed re- education class is? I'll do it. I never heard from them again, right? And it gets even better, right? Because on the basis of the calm is a bitch, the MP in question got into a shitload of trouble last month. Uh, when she made racist anti-Semitic remarks about the Jewish community in London, right, as well as also racist remarks about Indian people, she got suspended by Keith St- Keith Keith Starmer. Um, she said the whip removed, and she's now facing the end of her career. Right, and I and just to answer the point, I when it happened, I sent I sent her an email via a parliamentary a parliamentary email account, basically saying, "I got I, I beat you, and I then I, I beat you. You sent two detectives to my front door." Into my living room, and you tried to have me sent to fucking trial. Now your career was over. How do you feel? Oh, I, I, I ended the email by saying something along the lines of, "If, if by chance you don't like my views and opinions of this email, take it up with the, the, the Metropolitan Police and let them figure this out." Because I, I, I beat her. I literally fuck it. I didn't go looking for it. Um, she had a she had a thirty seven year history of racism. She was shielded by the London media, and she got away with it for years. But it got to a point where, frankly, even the London media and their own party had just had enough. They just had enough of it. Um, yeah. Oh, oh God, you, you just reminded me of Philip Schofield. He's he, he's another scumbag protected by the London media. His time, his time with the fucking sun is over. But that's another story altogether. I heard that get sacked by Good Morning Britain or whatever show. Oh well, well, what, 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 um, he was sacked last week by ITV, mm. but ITV didn't say he was sacked. All they simply said was it wasn't a sacking; it was a resignation. But it was a sacking. I mean, I mean, he was he was paid off. And it then transpired, the reason he was sacked was because he had a relationship with a 15-year-old boy. He we then got a job on his production team on the show two years later. Right? This on top of the fact that the relationship that the boyfriend he's currently with, the other one, 
started his relationship with Schofield when he was 17. And they both met in the West End for Texas and Jason, so Joseph and the Amazing Technical Gene Uh Schofield replaced Jason Donovan. Um, but yeah, and, and now it transpires that they're all arse cover, they're covering each other's asses. I didn't know this for 18 months. Well, you did, because that rumor has done the rounds in the London television industry for 18 months. And it's no particular secret. And what you're seeing now is ATV, who are now finished, uh, carrying their asses. Holly Willoughby, who shared a sofa with him 14 years, his co presenter, covering her ass. And everybody else who even remote came into striking distance with Philip Schofield, lying their heads off to cover their ass. It's, 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 fa- it's fascinating to watch, Jim, but that's, a, that's another story altogether. It's fun to watch as well, isn't it? Watching these cunts run oh, around. Oh, God. I mean, this, this one in Korea is, I mean, the, 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 my, my guess is that within, some, within the next 30 days, the head of ITV, Caroline McCall, um, will, will be gone. But, you know, ITV brought this on themselves. ITV brought this on themselves because in February 2020, you may remember, I don't know, he came out of the closet as being gay. He, mm. he was he was well, bisexual. He lied to his wife for years. And and he stated the fact he talked about his boyfriend. And then two days later, the tabloid media got wins the fact that his boyfriend was, was 17 when the relationship started. And they, they called for him to be sacked. But that's not the way he played it because when he came out of the closet, ICB celebrated him. ICB woke CRGT, ICB, as woke as it gets. They made me more woke than the BBC. It released the press statement celebrating him, congratulating him, throwing fucking pink carnations at his feet like you wouldn't believe, and just heralding him as a fucking hero. If they'd have sacked him at that point in February 2020, ICB wouldn't be fatally damaged today. That could have been avoided, but they they were so they were so woke, they they, they would they, they wouldn't even think about it. because after all to, to go in that direction you'd be homophobic, um mm. and you just you just you just be shouted down. But I bet they're fucking privately. You'd, I bet they're you'd, you'd be you'd be uh, hemorrhaging money like Target is at the moment in the US, uh, nine billion dollars. Oh, oh, well, let's put it this way, Stu. I mean, if the same thing happened at the ABC. My guess is that they wouldn't handle it any differently, and they'd rather go down with the ship than, oh, than basically yeah. than, yeah. than than well, basically Stan, really... Stan Grant just uh, resigned from Q and A, that awful shit show of a show, because of a uh, particular attitudes during the coronation of King Charles. Well, dickhead, you brought it on yourself when you said, "Oh, look, this is such a white uh, uh, scene here with the royal family on the belt." Well, it's the royal family. What do you expect? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's you, you, oh, sorry. I mean, sorry. I, suntan yeah, grant yeah. is the, 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 the same. The same. The same thing happened over here. There was, there was a black, a black American actress. I, I saw woman. her. I saw her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she, 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 she got custom plaza plenty on, oh, on yeah. social media. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's just like you do realize that there are African royal families which are black. You, you it's like you, you, you do, you do realize that there are. Like, African wolf, many African wolf families were black. You do realize that African countries aren't really all that diverse. So it's, just, right. and it's something, it's something it, they either didn't know or it didn't occur to them to actually ask the question. It's just like, oh shit. <laughs> I just had my ass handed to me in the fucking place. And it's the like, thing is, um, it, it is so, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so punk rock these days to say, no, oh, it's so yeah. white. It's so white. And you got your white privilege. Look, I, I've always been the way, Anthony. I don't give a fuck yeah, who you yeah, are. Yeah. You can be white, black. I, I don't fucking care. If you're going to yeah. speak to me, if you're going to treat me with respect, you will get it back from me tenfold. Okay? Yeah. If you speak to me like an absolute cunt, fuck off. I don't want to deal with you. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know who you fucking are. It's a well, simple case, in the, Yeah, sure. In the, in the case of the, age, the film Critic of the Age, uh, John Jake Wilson. I, ha- I that that was just by complete chance because I was going for the that, yeah. what happened was that it's Friday morning I was going for the negative reviews on Rotten Tomatoes for the the little the little mermaid mm-hmm. and bad review bad review bad review and and the king was hit by the age and I won't go into the review but it was it was just so such an it was such a state a sentence of blatant virtue false virtue that he couldn't try any harder if he tried right and I thought. Like, okay, I want to see if you've got a Facebook account, right? Because if you've got a Facebook account, I'm sending you a bad review of my own, right? And on the on the basis of right to reply. And he did. And, and I'll tell you what it was. He, he started this, 
the review, the quote in Rocking Tomatoes was something along the lines of, um, other than racist, quote unquote, other than racist weirdos, um, and there were many things, frankly, really, um, to criticize about the film. But frankly, the lead, the, the lead actress's cast, actress's casting isn't one of them. And I, 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 I sent the message on Facebook, and it's it was something along the lines of, well, as a as a race as a supposed racist weirdo, you don't particularly like. Uh, it's people like me who are going to be killing the film off on opening day weekend. I promise you, Stu, but in three minutes he blocked me. Oh yeah, he, he must. He he just he just happened to be on Facebook at the time. I didn't go looking for it, and within three minutes, he blocked me. And yeah. I just want to say the point. Um, I discovered one of my followers was following him, Lee Gambon. I thought, well, if you're following him, that's it, because basically we don't want you following me in the same way. And he, he, he I, I dropped him. He dropped me twenty four hours ago, and that was it. It's just like, it's just like, it's like you, you read something, and it's like you don't go looking to be triggered, but something triggers out of you. So something triggers the shit out of you. And you just snap the safety catches come off to like, right? Like, if you've got an email account, like, right, I'm sending you a right of reply, right? I'm yeah. sending you a bad review. This is what I think. This is the way I think you're wrong. Points one, two, three, four, and five. And you keep it clean, you play a straight game, and you just basically provide a, a bad review. But it's not like they can't, anything they yeah. can't handle. When someone yeah. comes at yeah. them with facts and they do it in a respectable tone without cursing, where they can't say, oh, well, yeah, all you can do is curse. Or you don't come at them with um, insults where they can say, oh, all you're going to do is insult me. When when it is laid out in front of them in black and white and they have no no constructive right of reply about why their yeah. review of the of that particular film is justified. Now, yeah. All you can do is block you. It's all over. All, 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 you, all you get from them, Stu, is a gas line. You're oh, is You're big. You're both is and big. Or Ism. something else. They, they yeah. just go down. Oh, this is this, this, this go down. Tick, tick the box. Tick the box. Tick the box. Tick the box. And it's just that. And the ones with the time when 10, 20, maybe 10 years ago, but certainly 20, were when the left would gaslight you, you couldn't respond. But what happened was that the right and conservatives, they had to raise their game. And they did. And they got past it. So that every time that now the, the left basically gaslights, it doesn't mean it doesn't really mean anything. It, because the right had to basically attune their arguments and raise their fucking game, and and they did, and they got past it. It wasn't pleasant, but they did get past it. They they literally had no choice but to raise their game, and they did, and the left still didn't get it. So sorry about this, too. It's funny how we, it's funny how angry I am when I start getting irritated. Just, uh, <laughs> why are we yeah. bored a week? <laughs> it was actually funny when you sent me that message about that film critic. I was out with the family. The Chinese restaurant last night. I was like, you know, who's this? I'm going, oh, I don't know. Don't know how much about it. I might have to quickly look him up while I was waiting for my buddy uh, Pork Spare Ribs to turn up <laughs> at the restaurant. Well, it, it was up because I thought the age newspaper, right? Well, I'm guessing, right? I thought the age, it's, 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 it's a national newspaper, national Austin, right? Okay. Go to the mm. Wikipedia profile. Well, it's, I, I discovered it, it wasn't even a national newspaper. It was like, it was Melbourne. It was one of the biggest newspapers in Melbourne. It I was. Thought, yeah. It was. It, it, I, I accidentally it, scored, I thought, I scored the bullseye and I didn't even know it. <clears throat> yeah, no, the Herald yeah. Sun. Herald Sun's a big one here in Melbourne, which is the the you know conservative uh, run paper. Um, but honestly, I, I thought on the age like, it's just like, like 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 the big the biggest national newspaper in in the country. Like it's just like no. like the voice the voice of like and 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 you, and you go to the, the, the Wikipedia profile. It's 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 Melbourne only. And I thought. Okay, yeah. well, maybe perhaps, and maybe perhaps I've taken this one a bit too seriously. But this, this is like he just so he just so triggered the shit. <laughs> it's, just, it's, read, it's readership is in the dirt. It's nothing. No yeah. one buys. Yeah. The Herald Sun barely sells. I mean, it, it it does sell. It's the biggest selling paper out there. But the Age is, it's it's dead. Has been for about yeah. ten years. Really, I'm, I'm guessing it's lib- I'm guessing I'm guessing it's liberal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, though, it's well, just because it's it's, it's uh, uh, broadsheet as well. It's just no one wants. It's just uh, yeah, sure. I get yeah. The, I get the impression. That, I get the impression the Australian newspaper industry is going the same way as it is over here, which is to say, it's oh, lost, lost legs. Yeah, it's it's all it's either basically digital now or nothing. They they are really. Yeah, because, I'm, 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 I'm getting the impression many of them are just hiding behind paywalls. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I yeah. said, that wouldn't surprise. Herald Sun used to be a buck, um, you know, a dollar 
Um, okay, but Buck, I used to buy the Herald Sun pretty pretty regularly back in the uh, late nineties, two thousands. Then it jumped up to about twenty, and about now it's two fifty, and you're getting forty or forty or fifty pages. And compared to used to be a dollar, and you're getting, geez, eighty or eighty five, eighty six or ninety pages. It's basically half its size for well over twice its price what it used to be. It's pointless these days. It, yeah, I mean, that's over here. I mean, just to the point, um, Murdoch even into about 18 months ago, and he was asked about the Sunday newspaper, and he said, um, the question was asked, do you have any plans to, to keep or sell the Sun? And he said, well, I've got to keep the Sun for the simple reason I can't sell it. And the, other, the interviewer said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, Murdoch said, well, it's literally worthless. It's literally not even worth one pence. I can't, if I would, if I were to sell the newspaper, I wouldn't even get one penny for it. I literally, he's literally stuck with a newspaper that's effectively dead, and he can't yeah. see. Literally can't yeah. see. I mean, the idea of of that lag going behind the paywall is just like absurd because it's just like no one, no one will do it. Literally, no one will do. It. And the same, the, the biggest selling tabloid, national tabloid at this moment in time in the UK is the, the Mail. It's 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 not the Mirror. It's it's the Mail followed, followed oh, by Daily Mail is Mail. horrible. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 so fucking self it's so self righteous and Santa Moon. This is just like it's just like it's but it, it, it's always it's always been that way. It's just like um uh, full full of surprises. Um, the, but the sun's gone. The the mirror is kind of not far behind it. Um, I mean, it's hard to believe that back in the nineteen there was a there was a there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a oh god, there's the world after the phone hacking affair. Was gone. I mean, Mur- Murdoch, Mur- Murdoch, and the family just didn't hang around. It just like shut the whole lot down. Literally, yeah. just but the, it, it, they took the decision of, of its last week, of the Friday night, the following, the following, the following Saturday. The last edition came out, and it was gone, and everybody was just down the road. Everybody. Um, it, 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 combined also with the fact that Murdoch lost a fortune in terms of compensation payouts as regarding the victims of phone hacking. Um, but back in the nineteen seventies and eighties, the the Sun and the Mirror. Well, just like in a power battle of the, as regarding he would become the nation's best selling daily tabloid newspaper. And the Sun basically won it. And the reason the Sun won was because of Bingo. Mer, Mer, Rupert Murdoch came up with so, so it was Kelvin McKenzie of the Sun. He was like the Sun that Rupert Murdoch never had. He came up with the idea of Bingo in 1983. Murdoch just said, do it. And they were the first national newspaper to, to um, implement a policy of. Daily bingo, daily prizes, and the, the mirror was just blindsided. They just, it, it just it was fucking huge. It was just yeah. the, mirror, the mirror just didn't see it coming, and they were flawed. It didn't help that the mirror, being a newspaper, basically um, lost free free general elections and free general elections on the Fatia, which is a bit a bit bit of a clear, but that's something else. But yeah, I mean, by 1983-84, Calvin Rupert's decision to implement bingo for the Sun newspaper just took off all over the country. There wasn't a single regional newspaper that didn't have their own bingo games. Um, yeah, it just it's it's so fucking bizarre. If, if you go to Kelvin McKenzie's Twitter account and ask the question, how influential was Sun implementing bingo um, against the mirror? He'd tell you it was gold. We were just shitting brick. We, we, we were shitting. We were shitting Nazi gold. We just we, it was just a mass. Nobody saw it coming, um, and they won the tabloid war. But for years, the tabloid between the sun and the mirror would just drag on year after year. And they, and they, they couldn't stand each other. Um, yeah, plus the fact that you had Murdoch and Maxwell. Uh, Maxwell had the mirror. Murdoch had the sun. And it didn't really help the Frankie. They didn't, well, Maxwell couldn't stand Murdoch. Murdoch really, frankly, couldn't have cared less. He just played 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 another game altogether. But yeah, I mean, it, was just, it just dragged on fucking years. Um, it's like, it's, it's, and, and the media just took it seriously. Couldn't believe it. So, 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 going off, going off the tangent for me. Oh. Oh, okay, we better um, wrap this up, I think, because we get yep. back to uh, Millington instead of Murdoch and Maxwell. Um, <laughs> yeah, very sad figure, uh, Mary Millington, RIP. Um, cool. I don't know, mate. Uh, just cuts a really, cuts a really, really lonely figure, a woman who had everything. Yeah. It, it, it it should it should it should be a grim and depressing documentary, but the funny thing is, it's it's anything but it's 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 it just it's a, the pace was just very very quick indeed, um, and it's and it's not really grim at all. It's not depressing at all. It has a grim and depressing ending and conclusion, mm. and she summons she swam in some dirty dirty waters and murky depths, but that's it. It's not how the documentary plays out at all. It's anything but. I think it's a documentary that she wants to got. Yeah. 
the the one thing I can't understand is about this, and it's it's strange when you have someone like her who very attractive, very desired by men, has money, but yet is still so lonely. You think to yourself, you, yeah. you've got everything. What more do you want? What more do you need? Yeah. You live this massive, <laughs> lavish house. Okay, you, you're in a relationship, but you're in a open relationship where you get to have as much sex as you want. What, what, what more is it you need to be happy? Which comes back to my point where I said, the I think it all come down. Her death was the sense of abandonment from the mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. feel that. Sure. Anything. I mean, on the night that she committed suicide, her husband Bob was in the living room. She was in the bedroom. I think that's I, 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 and I and I think that's very telling to be perfectly honest. Um, maybe something happened that the night, maybe something was coming for some considerable time, and something basically was released on the night in question that had been brewing for some months. I don't know, but he was in the living room watching match of the day Saturday late evening. She went to the bedroom, and she played it out. Um, um, and they and they say that she was on the verge of divorce and trying to take him for basically everything. Yeah, he didn't exactly try and save her. He didn't really. I, he he, no, he no. saw the writing on the wall. He knew, and this is, I think this goes back to, not I wouldn't say all, but some of the some of the, the lovers, the boyfriends, they saw that train sure. wreck coming. Hence sure. why hence, hence why they didn't really take that sort of next step and say, look, I want to be with you. I want, I want us to get married and make up. They knew that they can't sure. control this woman. She was on a one-way ticket to freaking hell, basically. Yeah, I mean the the the, the, the last the last video post that was released, and it was released a year almost a year after her death, was a documentary, um, Queen of the Queen of the Blues. Yeah. Um the, the strip the strip of documentary. And it's 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 the documentary where basically I'm just looking at the image of her on the left, basically her in her final days. She just looked as if she was just like starting to age quickly. Mm-hmm. Um it's it, it's one of it's one of, if if you see the documentaries you you'll that, that, it's, it's, you'll know what I mean when I say it's just tacky. It's just it, it's 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 documentary where uh, one of David Sullivan's models plays the Mary Millington in a casket, replicate replicating her body. Mm-hmm. And if, if you've seen it, if you've seen it, you'll know how tasteless it is. Um, David Sullivan hired one of his girls to play her. Um, the the director wanted to give him the casket. It was shot in a chapel in a crematorium, and. It was just, and and then they had a, and then what they did, this this, this is like, this is like the end, partly for the documentary. Beforehand, they shot most of the documentary in the in the in the home, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the two dogs on the sofa waiting for Mary to come back. Well, um, they weren't her two dogs because Bob, when she died, um, gave the dog away, um, so he didn't hang around. Um, cut to a shot, um, uh, of of naked models prancing through Mary's home with Bob, cons- with Bob's cons- consent. But Bob gave consent to David, David Sullivan. Mm-hmm. David Sullivan's mother's prancing through the family home, right, having having sex, right. Cut to the shot of Mary's bed, Mary's Mary and Bob's bedroom, where the suicide scene is mocked up. Um, pills on the bed, the suicide notes um, on the bed, the phone off the hook, hitting the floor, um, sheets pulled back, a bottle of vodka. And it's it's just so tacky. If, if you've tacky. if you've seen the documentary, yeah. yeah. If if you've seen Queen, of the, if you've seen Queen of the Blues, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's just, um, yeah, yeah. It's it's just that that. And that's I mean, the thing. I, I want to give. Yeah. Sure. That's the thing. That a year after her death, two years after her death, is not enough time to do a uh, full proper. Yeah. Yeah. Not enough water has gone underneath the bridge. You, you're doing yeah, one out sure. of and the, the one that reminds me of that the most is there was one done by Robert Altman about James Dean. Yeah, in the, in, in the 50s. Yes, the black and white one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two years after Dean's death. And while it's it's fine, it's not it's not very definitive. No. Mm. Too, too, too soon. Way too soon. Too soon, exactly. Um, but it's, it's like... It's like they, Every time, every time I want to give David Sullivan the benefit of that, I just think of that documentary because it was shot two months after she died. Bob gave David Sullivan and the production team access to the property. David, David, David Sullivan and his director sent the girls in, 
and are surrounding the property naked and simulate sex. And then Bob gave him permission and, and his director's permission um, to shoot inside the bedroom and then muck up the scene of the suicide. The, the scene of the suicide. It's just like it's it's like it's just like I don't know what he was thinking. I mean, it, 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 must, it must be just like look, I, I could have, my my gold goose is gone, right? But I, so although on the one hand she's gone in, in death, right? I, I, the bandwagon is still on the road. It won't be it won't be on the road for long, but it's still there. And so therefore. Maybe you can see why he did, but even if that was the case, I don't want to give him the benefit of the doubt. It's just absolutely horrible. It's just it's not like a forty-five minute documentary, um, but it's just it's just like it's just like oh god, that's sleazy, sleazy. I wonder if it's um, I wonder if it's one that he regrets doing now. He's you know, I I I I, I maybe maybe his 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 son is his, his son is about to inherit the family the family porn business. Um, so I'm guessing he's probably probably just a chip off the old block in the same way. But it's it's, it's like it's just like, I, it's like I don't know why you, I don't know why David Sullivan did it. I just other than maybe the whole idea of what little bandwagon is left. But but Sullivan is unre, is unrepentant in the fact that when she died, sales of his magazines just went for the roof because it was just like it's just like we, we can't believe she's gone. The fans just literally couldn't believe. She's gone. Because there'll be, there'll be um, no more pictorials, basically. <laughs> what what yeah, you get now is it basically lost, the last it, of his lot. Yeah. Yeah, it it it, it, it lasted for like two or three years because the fans was just like, I think I'm over this. And this is like the what the the one the one that we the one that was just like the center of attention is just gone. And there are other girls who, in in the Solvent Stable who basically follows. Um, they were popular, but they weren't they weren't her though. They weren't as popular as her. She, well, whatever it is she had, uh, that that was it. No, nobody else in Sullivan's stable basically got close. Um, and you, you can see, you can see why. Well, I mean, what, what would have happened to it if she's? Yeah. I mean, just to, again, the only the first time that they talked, the, the London television industry talked about her was when she died, because there's something like a core coming out of a bot, metaphorically coming up a bottle. It's like, oh, she's dead. Oh, now now we're acknowledging it for the first time. The fact that she, just just on the basis that she's died. And, and it's like, well, you could have done it all along, but but even there, this is like the the tabloids went to town. Um, uh, Mary Mary Porn Queen uh, blackmailing government. Um, inland the headlines were just like these, like inland revenue. Um, hound, hounded Mary, hounding Mary Millington to death, and it's just mm -hmm. given the whole list of tabloid headlines. And again, that lost it for months as well. But it was, it was like, but the tabloids, it was a dream story. Porn actress. Dead, drugs, Ben Coppers, inland revenue, poor magazines, and you put those into a food blender for thirty seconds, and what you have is a is 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 a classic tabloid newspaper story. It just had everything. It just didn't fail for them. It just had everything completely. It's so all Daily, done. Daily Mail's wet dream not a uh, headline that is. In the case of the Mail, they probably would have been pass passive aggressive. You know, we love her, we hate her, love her, we hate her. It's just like, and she's good for business. She's oh. gone for business, but she was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, mate. Let's wind it up. I think um, uh, going from your memory, what would you give this documentary out of ten? I I give it a nine. Nine. Uh, yeah. no, 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 normally I do five stars. So on the basis of the five stars, I give it four. But certainly nine out of ten. It's a very good, very good documentary. It's probably the best documentary I've seen that year. Okay. Does have an interview with Edward Tudor Pole, but very, very brief one about. 20 seconds we'll get of him, which is a bit of a shame because yeah, should, 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 more... should, should, should have been should have been longer to be perfect. So he, 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 he was he was there at the time on the scene. So we would have basically known where an awful lot of bodies were buried. Had uh, stories from yeah. about from uh, great rock and roll swindle he could have given us, but we got nothing about that at all. No, then... no, no. And and and, 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 and again it's a shame, but you know, I mean Eddie Cheetah pulls his own story. The fact the fact that he even to this day he's he still complains about the fact that he auditioned for Wib Nail and I. And never got the role, and he felt that frankly, really, he was geared for it, and it was also the best opportunity of his life, and he never got it. <clears throat> but that's another story altogether. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to give this documentary an eight and a half out of ten. I thought it was great, and um, I have read portions of the of the book, but <coughs> excuse me, it's um, it's you know, I can't show any pictures. I really can't. No, no, no. 
Not even this one right here. I can't show it. No. Or, or those I can't show at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say this too. At least it's not the Al Goldstein autobiography. The I Goldstein. Because that's something oh, else. Well, that right. one you cannot show. No. That one no, no. away. Yeah. Yes. Especially the photograph involving Al, Al Goldstein and Sega. <laughs> yes. That one is not <laughs> at all. Not like that one there either. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But. I mean, this this is a great book. Um, it's got it, it's it's the films of her, but also the life of her, more so geared on the films. Um, whether there is an actual autobi or not autobiography, an actual biography of her floating around, I don't know. Um, well, well it, it just reminded me in 1978 she did publish, and I forget the name of it. She did publish a very slight autobiography, um, but the whole thing was just basically complete fiction. It's just it's just. Basically, just just ghosted. It's just completely nice fiction. None of it was actually true. But she mm. did she did publish a book. Um, yeah, I don't know how well it did. Okay, yeah, but they're like those. Um, what's that? Here comes Harry Reams, or all the yeah, they yeah. Harry Reams. You know, they're just they're ghost written sort of things. Um, oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Thanks for coming. We finally got this done. We were talking about it for a few months. Um, so anyway. Announcement, uh, I will be missing all of June. I'm not recording no shows. I'm taking June off. So Hunter and John are going to be taking, or they're going to be steering the ship. I believe Eric Zaldivar is going to be filling in for me. Uh, how many episodes they do and I'll be missing, I don't know. But like I said, uh, what are we now? now? Anthony, 28th of May, as a day we're recording this. So basically, until July 1, I am and done. I'm just going to be taking a break. Um, so there's that. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Four weeks off. I've just got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. A little bit of health issues. Nothing to be, nothing drastic, but I mean, just things going on. I just, I just need June off. So that's what I am doing. So I'll be gone for a few episodes after this one. And, um, Yeah. Not much else to say. Stick around for this guy, for his piece, coming up after this. And, um, yeah, that'll be it. Uh, thanks, Anthony, mate. Pleasure. Thanks, Thank you, brother. Um, we'll hash up something else to do later down the year, something else we can talk about. Something British that we can talk about. Oh, God, don't mind me. You're, you're the go-to man for all British stuff, I think it is. But um, anyway, um, so that's that. Uh I'll catch you guys in July sometime. See you later. And now, it's time for... Rue, Britannia, with your foreign correspondent, the Nez. In a move that will surprise nobody ever those who still didn't laugh when Biden fell over again, the Philip Schofield affair rumbles on into the summer silly season, with all of its major players effectively asked Cameron to delay their inevitable sackings. Schofield, a 61-year-old national TV treasure, having been sacked by ICP for grooming and enabling a 15-year-old boy, still plays the victim, this to the point where he's now worried about the idea of not being able to return to the local gay disco. His soon-to-be-sacked co-presenter, Holly Willoughby, he was effectively caught lying by saying she had absolutely no idea what was going on for six years, hangs on by her metaphorical fingernails. The ICB share price effectively tanks on the London Stock Exchange for another week, and the woke CRGT border ICB faces calls for mass resignations, given how it effectively knew what was going on again for six years. Given how the BBC has been in the line of fire for a decade in respect of covering up child sex abuse and sex abuse in general, it's disturbingly reassuring to see ITV effectively playing catch up. Though, lest we forget, Philip Schiffel started his career as a children's TV presenter at the BBC. He basically spent many a year with his hands on a puppet's arse. I'm sure his ex boyfriend knows the feeling. Badnage and the copper coloured ginger ex prince, Prince Juricel, is back in the high court again this week. 
for a second time in a month, but this time effectively over legal action concerning phone hacking by the Daily Mirror. All somewhat routine for the ginger victim of spousal abuse, except that this time it marks the first time that any member of the royal family has actually given evidence in a legal trial. Really, the Markles will do anything for publicity. Anyway, the allegations going back to 2010 happen to be in relation to his relationship with his previous girlfriend, Chelsea Davy. He also promptly dumped him back in 2010. Maybe it was his obsession with Nazi uniforms. All very messy for sure. One reason perhaps as to why the king has effectively decided to avoid the sun by effectively barreling off to Romania for a walking holiday in Transylvania. On the other hand, it's hardly much of a surprise, given how he did warn the Markles never to sue anybody in relation to the media. Given how the Markles do effectively tend to pose themselves in court under oath, a <laughs> good idea. Sport. And as the English Premier League season effectively comes to another end for another year, the usual array of managers leaving their jobs for failing for not to be somewhat shite effectively kicks in. Likewise, Tottenham Hotspur were the first club out of the gate this season by effectively making the first managerial appointment of the summer. This in the form of ex Celtic manager Ange Postacoglu. As you can tell, he's Irish. Anyway, it's all very much a relationship based on convenience. Spurs need another manager to sack in 18 months after failing to get into Europe. Tony the Greek is effectively stuck in Scotland looking for a way out back to London. Not he's ever been there. And Premier League fans effectively require comic relief for another season, which is to say Tottenham Hotspur. And with Tottenham Hotspur, you do indeed get comic relief, given how the club spent £600 million on a new stadium, only to discover they had no team to actually put it in. Further notes in passing, the British Soap Awards were held last week. The usual shenanigans kicked in. Doors slammed, drama queens kvetched, tears blubbed, closets were emptied, coke snorted. Sadly, the host for this year's awards couldn't make it. Philip Schofield. The final of this year's Britain's Got Talent was staged at ITB, repeat till fade. And finally, the Isle of Man TT motorcycle format gets underway for another season. At the time of recording, the official fatality rate is 249 riders dead and 12 injured. Still, talk about the idea of doing things by halves. Packs.